Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this village board meeting to order on Monday, August 20, 2018, and ask if you would please rise and join the village board in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Baldino. Here. Trustee Tenalia. Trustee Blackwood. Here. Trustee Rosenberg. Here. Trustee Lebeds. Here. Trustee Cedor. Here. Trustee Scaletta. Here. Trustee Glasgow. Here. President Hayes. Here. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We have two sets to approve tonight. The first is from our committee, the home meeting from August 6, 2018. Are there any changes or passes? Pass. Move pa approval. Passed by Trustee Glasgow. Motion to approve by Second. Trustee Blackwood. Seconded by Trustee Rosenberg. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And next, uh, the minutes from the village board meeting from that same, e same evening. Any questions, uh, changes, or passes? Pass. Move, ap uh, move approval. Second. So, all right. Passed <laughs> by Trustee Glasgow. Seconded by Trustee uh, Blackwood. Or motion by Trustee Blackwood. Seconded by Trustee Lebeds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And next, the approval of the accounts payable. And I call on Trustee Rosenberg. Thank you, Mayor. I'd uh, move approval of the warrant register with a check date of August 15, 2018, in the amount of $2,773,384.12. Second. Motion by Trustee Rosenberg, second by Trustee Glasgow. Any questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Glasgow? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Cedor? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. Trustee Lebeds? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. We move on in the agenda to recognitions and presentations, and it's always very special for us to have a full uh, audience of people here are, who are here for very positive things. And so we're here tonight for uh, some very special recognitions and presentations. And the first is a presentation of the 2018 Kenneth Hood Senior Service Award. And so I would like to call the chairman of our Senior Citizens Commission, Fred Feldman, to the podium. Fred, if you'd come. And uh, welcome. Thank you. I would ask that the members of the Senior Citizens Commission rise so they could be identified. John Agum, Mr. George Weber, Ms. Sharon Foss, Ms. Maureen Seleski, Ms. Chris, Kristen Ramsey, and Ms. Sharon Adams. I think we got them all. Right. One more over there. Thank you for your service. Oh, Dr. Motto. Hello, Dr. George Motto. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us tonight. The Kenneth Hood Senior Service Award was established by the Village of Arlington Heights under the auspices of the Senior Citizens Commission 11 years ago to identify and recognize residents, business people, and volunteers in the village who've made a significant contribution to the well-being of the village's senior citizens. To be eligible, the nominee must have exhibited characteristics such as a significant history of service to the senior community, developed, provided, or conducted programs or services that enhance the quality of life for seniors, embraced or nurtured activities that affect seniors in a positive way, or set an example by contributing their efforts with a zest for the joy of living. This year's Kenneth Hood Senior Service Award winner, Ms. Cass Kathy Kasperwitz embodies all of those characteristics. Without going into great detail, in 2006, Kathy and a friend began what today is known as the Escorted Transportation Service Northwest. It provides escorted transportation for seniors to medical appointments. The escort picks up the senior in the escort's car, drives him or her to their medical appointment, stays with them until the appointment is concluded, and takes them to a pharmacy if necessary and then returns them home. To date, approximately 29,000 round-trip rides have been provided 
at nominal or no cost to the patient. 89 drivers use their own cars to provide transportation within a service area of 160 square miles, which territory embraces most of the northwest suburbs and accesses five major regional hospitals. Although Kathy retired as executive director of the Escort of Transportation Service Northwest in 2013, she continues to serve as a volunteer driver and president of its board of directors. Kathy also knits scarves for homeless persons and distributes them at PADS facilities. She serves on the Wheeling Township Board for Seniors and Aging. She volunteers with Catholic Charities Northwest Senior Services and with the St. James Elizabeth Ministry, which provides support for women with problems with childbearing. Kathy also provides numerous other volunteer services at St. James Parish, including the Wheels to Worship program. It's clearly evident that Ms. Kathy Kasprowitz has earned the title of the 2018 winner of the Kenneth Hood Senior Service Award. Bravo, Kathy. Kathy, why don't you come forward? Well, Kathy, I can't say it any, any better than Fred just did. I've gotten to know Kathy very well over the last five years or so that I've been mayor, and it's primarily because of uh, all the volunteer work that she's done. It's, I always seem to see her at uh, luncheons recognizing volunteers here in the village of Arlington Heights or in the northwest suburban area. And so uh, I'm so thankful for getting to know Kathy over that time, but also especially for all the great work that you've done on behalf of not just seniors, but many people in need in our community and uh, surrounding communities. So um, on behalf of a grateful community and all of the citizens that you've served, I am very honored and pleased to present you with the Kenneth Hood Senior Service Award for 2018. Congratulations, Kathy. Kathy, the floor is yours. I'd rather have root canal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start at the top. When Marie and I decided to do this, we put it in God's hands. We said, if it's meant to be and you bless it, we'll do it. Need I say more? Thank you, God. I also want to thank Marie because it was her vision and her idea. I was just the minion. I just did the work. She dreamed it into existence. So thank you, Marie. I also want to thank Fred and the commission for this honor. I appreciate that so very much. And I don't see her here, but um, Kelly Barron, one of my former associates who nominated me for the award, Thank you. My family and friends who have been so supportive through all the years that I neglect them because I'm doing something else, so I appreciate them tremendously. I also want to say thank you very much to the people in this room because it is here where we came and said, could we get space in the senior center? Karen welcomed us with open arms and all of you said, okay. So that meant a great deal to this program and our ability to have seniors connecting with seniors. So we are indeed the village of good neighbors. We care for each other, and I think that says it all. Thank you. Well, now on to another very special recognition and presentation. That's the Alan F. Bombick Award for Excellence in Design. Alan F. Bombick was a founding member of the Design Commission serving on the commission for 21 years from 1995 to 2016. 
in memory of Alan's passing in June 2016 and in honor of Alan's contributions to the aesthetic growth of Arlington Heights, the annual Alan F. Bombick Award for Excellence in Design was established. To present the 2018 awards this evening, we are pleased to have with us tonight Design Commissioner Ted Eckert. Ted? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, village trustees, village staff, members of the Design Commission, guests here this evening, and friends and neighbors watching at home. It is with great pleasure that we, the Design Commission in the Village of Arlington Heights, honor Alan Bombeck's legacy in recognizing design excellence this evening. As Mayor Hayes mentioned, Allen was a valued member of the Design Commission for 21 years until his passing on June 20th of 2016. Allen and I were founding members of the Design Commission. Sitting next to Allen all those years, we started as colleagues and we became friends. His voice was steady, intellectual, poised, and always polite. Allen was true to himself and the trade he loved and lived his life in concert with his voice. This evening we are honored to have Alan's family in the audience. Please welcome Diane Bombeck, Alan's wife. <laughs> Lauren and C.J. Bombeck-Peterson. Grandsons Jonathan and Logan. And Michael and Zanetta Bombic Siles. This evening we have Design Commission members with us, and I, I, John Fitzgerald didn't want me to introduce him, but I, I can't avoid the opportunity. I'd like to recognize John Fitzgerald, our current chairman. Kirsten Kingsley, John Cubo, and our newest member, Scott Sayer. And of course, not forgetting Steve Houtzinger, our wonderful staff liaison. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service in conducting our important work. It's time for the second annual award presentation. The presentation each year is awarded to a single family home and a single commercial project. These projects are brought before our committee. Um, there are a lot of them when we start. We debate, we look at them, and finally we come to a consensus. And by Robert's rules of order, we vote the winner in. So, uh, this evening, I'm very pleased to announce the winner of the Single Family Award is the Knight Residence at 444 South Lincoln Lane. The architect is Michael Abram. Representing uh, the architect this evening is Kevin Geist. <coughs> the general contractor is MG Brothers Construction. Greg Kuvala is here, and the homeowners Lacey and Bernadette Knight. If you would come forward while I say a few words about the house. Those that are here, please come up and stand next to me. <clears throat> the house itself is a brand new home. Uh, it has wonderful character. It's a modern farmhouse style home. Uh, it's unique massing and excellent detailing on all four sides. It fits very well into the scale and character of the Scarsdale neighborhood. I will now present the plaques. Come up here, we'll have a photograph with the mayor. Congratulations. 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 Thank
Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And now I'm very pleased to announce the commercial award winner, and that is Thomas Middle School at 1430 North Belmont Avenue. The architect for this project was STR Partners, Mike Henderson in attendance this evening. The general contractor is Nicholas Associates. Joe Papa Nicholas is here. And representing School District 25 is Ryan Schultz and Dr. Lori Bine. If you'd please come up and I'm going to talk a little bit about the building as you work your way up here. Uh, this this um, award is for a, an addition to the building. Um, it's uh, located on the south end of the school. It includes a new gymnasium, locker rooms, entry lobby, and an expanded administrative office area. The new entrance and office wing are modern and inviting. And I must tell you, the photograph of that, that entrance did it for me in the vote. It's fabulous, that entrance. It's really great. Um, the large gymnasium is uh, very nicely integrated with the massing of the existing school. Excellent combination of exterior materials and colors to complement the existing school. Uh, incidentally, STA partners have done many projects for District 25, and we thank you for your wonderful design. At this time, I'd like to present the plaques. Well, thank you, Ted, and all members of the Design Commission. And a special uh, word of thanks to the Bombic family, um, Diane and, and your children and grandchildren. Uh, we thank you so much for being here tonight to represent Allen and, again, for all that Allen did to contribute to uh, this very fine community. There's uh, many, many people that contribute to the quality of life that we enjoy in Arlington Heights, and Allen was certainly one of them over the course of 16 years. So we can't thank you enough again for being here. All right. We uh, will take a minute if you'd like to um, leave those who are here for the presentations, if you'd like to leave quietly as we move on in the agenda. We'll give you that opportunity now. Well, let, let me uh, move on in the agenda to citizens to be heard. I've got a couple of blue cards, but apparently those are on agenda items. Is that right, Becky? That's all I have right, all right now. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the village board on an item not on the agenda? All right, seeing none. We'd like to move forward then to old business. And perhaps in the interest of time, if I could have a motion to move up the uh, recommendation for Kendall, Kendall's appointment to the Youth Commission. 
Let's do that now. So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion to take uh, Kendall's appointment out of order by uh, Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Baldino. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Kendall, if you come forward to the podium. Mayor, should I make the motion? Sorry. We didn't vote, did we? No. <laughs> okay. That's probably a good idea. We need to do that. Uh, trust, uh, for first call on Trustee Scaletta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move now, as I did earlier this evening, to concur in the mayor's appointment of Kendall Fanho to the Youth Commission with the term ending April 30th, 2019. I'll second the motion. All right, motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Cedor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, now, Kendall. <laughs> You'd raise your right hand and repeat after me. I and state your full name. I, Kendall Fano. Having been appointed to the Youth Commission. Having been appointed to the Youth Commission. In the village of Arlington Heights. In the village of Arlington Heights. The county of Cook. In the county of Cook. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office according to the best of my ability. Of the office according to my best abilities. Congratulations, Kendall. <laughs> going to present you with the village logo pin to wear as a proud uh, representative of this community and this village board and to wear it proudly as an appointed member of one of our boards and commissions and also if you would take your oath and sign it in front of our village clerk. We look forward to working with you. Thanks Kendall. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Let me also take, if I could, um, item D out of order, the recommendation for the Trackside Liquor Commission license. Um, and so I call on trustee, well, let me have a motion to take it out of order first. So moved. moved. Second. Second. By trustee Cedor. Seconded by trustee Baldino. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Now, trustee Labeds. Thank you, Mayor Hayes. I move now, as I did earlier this evening, to recommend that the Village Board of Trustees recommend to the Liquor Commissioner the issuance of a Class A liquor license to Arlington OTB Corporation doing business as Trackside Arlington Park, located at 2000 West Euclid Avenue. Second. Motion by Trustee Labed, seconded by Trustee Rosenberg. Any further questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion passes. Um, can we take the, the legal item? You can. You can also just do it later. It's, it'll be approved. Okay. Either way. You're welcome to leave at this point. We're, we're going to formally approve it later, but all right. Thank you all. Now, let's go back to uh, the regular order in our agenda. So we'll take old business, item A, the report of the committee the whole meeting from August 13 2018 and we items a B and C we do have three items that dealt with code provisions on campaign contributions and so we've got three separate motions to make tonight um, and Ms. Ward if you could give us just some some background on this before we make the motions I'd appreciate it sure these all relate to current code provisions about campaign limiting can limitations on campaign contributions. The current code contains a provision that prohibits liquor license holders from contributing to campaigns. Um, in light of current case law over the last year, two years, that's become illegal to have that kind of restriction. So the first, I, the first recommendation and the first motion relates to the deletion of that provision of the village code. The next two relate to the limitations the code has limitations of 250 for an individual and $500 for organizations and if the village board wanted to keep those then there was a concern that those limits were a little bit low and so those motions relate to both increasing the amounts that can be contributed to a contribution and changing the definition of organization to make it clear that we're not impacting organizations rights in terms of speech because the courts have also come down on those as well. 
All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have who made the first motion, but uh, if anybody recalls, item A, is there a motion to- I believe to Trustee Glasgow me, okay. made them all. So Five. there is a, an additional preference, uh, preface to this. Um, liquor license holders are being restricted by six, 605, which the court holds a higher standard to free speech than it does other cases. So if you single out a certain person because of their class, you can't end up restricting that speech. The courts have ruled that that's unconstitutional. So we as a board ended up indicating that we wanted to be in accord with our duties as legislators to end up making our code in accord with federal and state law. Hence, deletion of this particular clause is appropriate um, with regard to subsection A. With regard to subsection B, I have some additional comments, but I'll withhold them until such time as we vote. Um, I'll make a motion as I did uh, now, as I did then, that the committee in a whole recommend that the village board delete section 1605, prohibition on contributions from liquor license holders. There's a second to that motion. Second. All right, we have a motion by Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Cedor. Questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience on this one? All right, saying none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Trustee Glasgow. As to subsection B, um, this modifies section 604, which raises the campaign uh, limits to $500 per an individual and $1,000 for an organization. An organization is defined in section C. We didn't pick these numbers out of a hat. These are not arbitrary numbers. Um, the last court decision that we took a look at was 1981, where the United States Supreme Court held that a $250 limitation for a local, or a local referendum was an unconstitutional restriction of free speech because you limited the amount of money that the, the organization of the people could put into that free speech issue. Therefore, you muted their free speech uh, their free speech rights by not allowing them a reasonable opportunity to voice their views. In putting $1981 into $2018, um, anybody who is out there who has run a home for the past 25, 30 years knows that $250 30 years ago doesn't buy what it buys today. <clears throat> so we put it into the the uh, calculations for what the inflation rate was from then until now uh, it comes out to be a little less than $500 uh, for $250 in today's dollars versus those dollars at the time. And it comes out a little less than $1,000 for what occurred um, back at the uh, time the case was decided to today's dollars. Um, this has not been looked at in, I believe it's 1991, Ms. Ward? When it was adopted, yes. It was adopted. It From time to time, we have to go through and take a look at ordinances to update them for current times, uh, for changing conditions. Um, anybody can look at different fines, and you can see that a fine of $5 150 years ago is not the same as a fine of $5 today. So we just adjusted it for inflation. Uh, there is no real change in the, the ordinance other than the change in the amounts. And one of the reasons that the board wanted to do this, I believe, was that there was a suit filed by Mr. Berrios in his last election, which challenged the free speech issues and the campaign donors. The state campaign limits are much higher than ours. And we wanted to keep it at a level which was appropriate uh, for Arlington Heights. And as the board, as a group, we decided that this was an appropriate uh, amount for us to raise this to, to be in accord with the law and not be subject to any kind of constitutional or uh, unconstitutional lawsuits against us for restricting free speech. As a result of that, I would make a motion to, uh, in accord with the Committee of the Whole's recommendation that the Village Board amend Section 1604 campaign contributions and raise the individual <coughs> contribution level to $500 and the organization level to $1,000. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Cedor. Uh, thank you for those comments, Trustee Glasgow. I think that uh, very accurately and uh, appropriately summarizes what we talked about and the rationale for this change. And so uh, I think... Uh, <coughs> I can't say it any better than that, so I won't. So, Trustee Scaletta. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to vote no, as I did uh, last week. I'm um, a little bit uncomfortable being up for election next year and raising the, uh, the limits on uh, contributions to campaigns. Any further questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we do have one blue card to speak on this uh, item, and that's Keith Mullins. Mm. Mr. Mullins. Tr trustees, before the board approves the 100% increase in campaign contribution limits that was recommended by the board at the Committee of the Whole last Monday, I'd just like to make a couple of brief comments. To my understanding, the way I understand this is the issue is do limits on local campaign contributions violate home rule or not? That's the way I, I see this. If they do violate home rule, then the village has to revert to the state limits of 5,600 per individual and 11,000 per organization if they violate home rule. In my opinion, uh, we've, had, we've had no problems with the campaign contributions in, in town. I think it's, it's worked fine and we can reasonably expect that we will not in the future. The bigger risk than worrying about whether the 250 is too low or the 500 is too low is whether we're violating home rule. That seems like a bigger risk that we've been able to live with over the last how many years? So this rush to double the campaign contributions, something just doesn't sit right there. If we do not, vi if this does not violate, if we don't fight, maybe we aren't violating home rule. So what exactly is the reason for increasing our local limits? Uh, like I say, we've had no problems before. Uh, it also appears that the new limits of 500 per individual and 1,000 per organization, 100% uh, increase, may hamper lesser financially connected new candidates from competing in a local election. They may, not, they may be at a disadvantage at this point where they didn't have that, that problem before. Um, Although I do understand, I do understand your reasoning since 1994 when these limits were last considered, campaign expenses have substantially increased, just like everything else. The reason that was given was that the increase is necessary for candidates, this is at the Committee of the Whole last Monday, that is necessary for candidates today to meet the expenses to run a competitive campaign. I would like to add to that, however. Not being able to meet expenses is exactly the same reason that many residents of our town stood in this very boardroom in May of last year and asked this board for an increase in the minimum wage necessary to meet their rising expenses. And they were voted down and could have been approved. It looks like we've got some bit of a contradiction here, President Hayes. It's okay to raise limits necessary to meet campaign expenses just prior to an election. In, on April 2nd, but it doesn't seem to be okay to allow the minimum wage to increase to meet our working residents' expenses they need right now. The reason for the increase in both cases to me is exactly the same. It's exactly the same. It is necessary to meet expenses. In my opinion, um, these are not apples and oranges issues. They're the same thing and they're tied at the need to meet expenses. I ask that the board vote against their own recommendation from the committee of the whole last Monday and not increase the limits on campaign contributions. Thank you, President. Right, thank you, Mr. Moans. And just in response, I, I do think, as I said last week, that these, the issues that you raise are apples and oranges in terms of comparison. And so I think the rationale, as we identified last week and as we identified tonight, are appropriate. Uh, Mr. Recklaus. I was just going to point out one more item, Mayor, that came up last week for the benefit of the audience is that based on staff's research, we are the only community in the area that we could find that has campaign limits of this kind, period. Um, and so every other municipality in the area that we're aware of is just subject to the state limits. I, I agree 100%. And frankly, I don't understand the criticism of it. I mean, it, and certainly no rush. Certainly, we haven't raised these limits in almost 25 years or more. And so uh, certainly, it's something that I think is very appropriate to do for the benefit of all residents who might run. And so it's an across-the-board uh, increase in the amount that can be donated. And I think it's very fair to all potential candidates. And I think it's uh, very appropriate to be done at this time. So we have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments from the board? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. <coughs> one nay by Trustee Scaletta. And we have one uh, last motion to report out, Trustee Glasgow. As uh, Ms. Ward stated, this just uh, defines the organizations under our statute, um, which are in accord with the case law, which the, the legal uh, staff, both the board's attorney and the staff's attorney, did an excellent job in briefing out, essentially just defining what an organization is so we don't run afoul of any constitutional issues in the future. I will move now, as I did then in the Committee of the Whole, recommending that the Village Board define organization in Section 1604 campaign contributions in accordance with the state law. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Cedor. Questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. There is no other old business, so we would move on to the consent agenda. Are there any members of the board who wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Any members of the audience who wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Seeing none, are there any members of the board who wish to vote no or pass on any item on the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, I have to recuse myself from consent legal A. I apologize. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, it's consent legal A. Okay, so noted. Any other uh, recusals or no votes? Seeing none, do I have a motion to um, approve? So move. Second. By Trustee Labed, seconded by Trustee Rosenberg. Any further questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience? Roll call. Trustee Labed? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Glasgow? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Cedor? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Let's take up um, approval of bids. We've got one item tonight, the General Obligation Bond Series 2018. Mr. Recklaus? Uh, the uh, Village won out. We're, um, this, the 2018 budget plans include a bond issue to be uh, used to cover costs associated with the construction of our stormwater projects that have been identified through various studies over the last couple of years. The estimated $9.9 .9 million bond issue is going to be spent over the next few years um, as design processes, bids, and construction is completed. Um, we went out to bid this afternoon, um, and uh, we, uh, I don't know if Mr. Keeney wants to comment on the results of our, uh, our letting. Sure, thank you, Mr. Rackhouse. Uh, we had a competitive bid this morning at the Connecticut Community Bond Association, and we had a stormwater control project. It was a really competitive bid. Bidders, I think it was like 57 bids from those bidders. We're coming fast and furious for a while there. We got a very good uh, competitive rate, um, so we're very happy with the results of this. And uh, Kevin, if you could come up and give them a rundown of their results. Good evening. Yes, as, as they said, it was a very competitive sale. Uh, the best bidder was FTN, also known as First Tennessee National. Uh, the rate was 3.31. Uh, of the packet that was handed out, the second page is a snapshot of the uh, online bidding when it was over with. And if you look at the, the third from the right-hand column, it shows that FTN really wanted your paper. They bid eight times. Uh, Northland Securities <coughs> wanted it more. They bid 18 times, but they just couldn't quite get there. The difference was two thousandths of a percent, and they just kept going back and forth and trying. And you had all these other bidders um, nine times, three, th the, the, three times. I mean, Robert W. Baird usually bids once and goes away because they, they're, they're a very strong bidder, but they bid three times. Quite unusual for them. So you see it was a very spirited bid. Um, the sale was supposed to end at... 10.30 Chicago time, 11.30 Eastern time. At the top, it says it was extended to 11.35.29, just like on eBay, where they keep extending it as, as a, somebody else gets into first place. So it, it, was, it was a very good thing to watch. Uh, the, there's a premium being bid on the bonds. So, so the bond issue is um, actually $9,530,000, but you're being paid $9 million 
926, $926,222.90 for it. And, that, and that's um, uh, in order to make sure the bond issue stays under the $10 million cap for bank qualification, which gets a little bit better interest rate because banks can buy it and they get a slight tax break. So with that, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Kevin, um, thank you uh, for your continued representation of the village on this. It's been uh, many, many years now. I know how many years have you been working with us? Uh, well, the, the company, I think 45 or 50. I've only been around 37. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, can you just explain in layman's terms the significance of the fact that this was a very competitive and spirited bid, uh, bidding process? Well, certainly. It, it saves money. Um, each, the, the first bidder, for instance, put in a 3.45 or 3.46 or something, and um, that's, that's fine, but they, they ended up down, they, they improved their bid a little bit. But if you look at, for instance, FTN, um, their bid was the 3.31, but they started out at a 3.47. So by, by going back and forth, they reduced their bid a sixth of a percent. And that translates into real money for the village. Yeah. In terms of our financial strength and position, what, what does it say about the village of Arlington Heights? Well, it's a very, a very attractive paper. I mean, after all, you're double A one, a double A plus. I'm sorry, double A one, uh, the second highest rating for Moody's. The, ra the Moody's report is attached to this report, and they say really good things about the village. A very strong financial, strong management. Um, it's, it's just a really good piece of paper, especially for an underwriter who wants to sell uh, to in Illinois because it's a, you're a very well-known name. Okay. That's what I was looking I for. I Thank you. A good, a, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, questions for Kevin? No. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Glasgow. So we say $53,915.01? Uh, that's on their bid, yes. Okay. And From since, the process, yeah. since I'm not a bond guy, and I, 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 we got this today, so essentially this is going to mature in 2038? 20, 20, yes. It's a 20-year yeah. level debt service. If you look in your bond ordinance that you're passing, it's within a couple thousand dollars every year for the next 20 years. Okay. And as rates go so for the people at home so they understand this is compared to what other municipalities may or may not get, let's so say, a bigger municipality that may sit closer to the lake. I, I mean, how comparatively, are the rates different substantially? With, with other very high-rated communities that we've sold recently, this is right there. You know, other trip, you know, triple A's, double A1's, all right there. Everybody's in this range. Um, but it, it's not even so much size as it's about bond rating. So, you know, I mean, you look at there are communities that are A rated, they're going to be paying something closer to four. You look at communities that are less than A rated in the B's, and you'd be looking at a four and a half to five percent range. And that translates into how much money for the taxpayers? When you drop those rate, when you drop those ratings, because of everything that you listed off the management, the, the stability, et cetera, when you end up dropping those ratings, how much does it cost us? end up purchasing bonds then? Well, on, on this bond issue, one-tenth of one percent is $115,000 over the life of the issue. So if you were a community that was paying a percent more, you'd be paying $1.1 million more over the life of the issue. That's exactly what I was yeah, looking yeah. for. I, mean, it's, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, and I appreciate you bringing this uh, to us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Further questions? Trust Nothing? All right, saying nothing from the board, I do have one blue card. Uh, we may as well take it this time, Mr. Mullins. The same issue. I just, I just have a question. Regardless of what the rate is, do you know what the amount of taxes that's going to increase to pay for this? I mean, can we figure out that? The, the, uh, Mr. Mullins, the, do you want me to take that, Randy? Or you, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this is not a, a it, it's, it's supported by the property taxes if we didn't have another source of revenue to pay for it. But 
but the village does have another source of revenue, and that's stormwater utility fees. So there will be no property taxes paid on this bond issue. So the fees we're paying on, the, on our water bills now is going to pay for this? Is going to pay for this. Uh, okay, I see, because it says, okay, I see. The, the, so we're already paying for this as water bill. It's, all, it's built into the stormwater utility fee already. Okay. All right, anyone else in the audience wish to address the board on this item? Seeing none. Um, Move approval. Second. Now, can we, do we approve this and then? We'll approve the approve bid the and bid. then the ordinances later. And then the ordinance, okay. So we had a motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Glasgow. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, let's uh, have a motion to take the ordinance out of order. So moved. Second. By Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Rosenberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now is there a motion to approve the ordinance? So moved. Second. Second. By Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Labed. Any further questions or comments on the ordinance? Anything from the audience? Roll call. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Labed? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. Trustee Glasgow? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Cedor? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Well, thanks again, Kevin, for all your great work on behalf of the village. Thank you. We move on then to, we can leave the other legal since the petitioners have already left. So let's uh, move on to the new business item, and that's Napleton slash Arlington Lanes parking lot at 3435 North Kennecott Avenue. A request for a land use variation for auto lot, auto sales lot, and accompanying variations. And petitioners present, if you just introduce yourself if you would. My name is Ryan Ponton from Napleton. Okay. And why don't you proceed with, uh, unless the staff has something to start off with? Anything to start off with, or should we oh. begin? No, the uh, petitioner can begin. Okay. Go ahead. It's brief. Uh, due to significant sales growth since 2015, which has seen annual sales increases of between 15 and 60 percent at the Chrysler Jeep dealership located at Dundee Road, Napleton has had to store its excess auto inventory off site. We've had a lease in place with Arlington Lanes since this time, leasing space of up to 100 cars in the lot, which is located 400 feet east of the dealership. The Plan Commission has made a motion to the board to approve the necessary variations provided. Such approval is subject to the 10 conditions enumerated in the Staff Development Committee's July 20th report. Napleton has agreed to comply with such conditions and has provided a revised landscape plan to the village highlighting the work to be completed. We hereby request that the board approve the motion and are happy to answer any questions which the board may have. All right, thank you. Just if you could put up the aerial, someone, uh, which, which spots are we talking about that, that you'll be? So it's the two lanes right there, the two to the, like I said, be the west, yeah. So right next to the, uh, what's that, Kennecott Road right Closest there. So to those Kennecott. Two. Yeah. Okay. All right, nothing else for me. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Scaletta. You know what, I, I reviewed the, uh, the materials that were enclosed and I think this is a, a great opportunity to use some parking that's not utilized on a regular basis and will hopefully increase the tax revenue for the village um, on selling vehicles, which offsets the, um, the tax levy when it comes to real estate taxes. So I am in favor and I'm ready to move approval. Why don't you make the motion? I would move approval um, and concur with the uh, plan commission. Second. Recommendation. There's a motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Labeds. Any further questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience on this one? Well, we anticipated a little more discussion on this, but we, I think, uh, as Trustee Scaletta indicated, this makes a lot of sense, and I think it's a good partnership between the two businesses and something that will... Uh, hopefully help both businesses out. And so um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, good luck. Thank you very much, appreciate it. All right, there is no other new business, so we'll move on to the remaining legal item. And that's the approval of the ordinance for the Class A liquor license for 
Arlington Trackside. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. By Trustee Glasgow, seconded by Trustee Rosenberg. Any further questions or comments from the board or the audience? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Glasgow? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Cedor? Yes. Trustee Labeds? Yes. Trustee Blackwood? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Really Report of the Village Manager, Mr. Reckless? Nothing further this evening. Okay. Anything from the board under p uh, petitions and communications? Trustee Glasgow. I'd just like to ask, Mr. Reckless, the, the second portion of the Walk Arlington is going to be rolled out when? Um, should be relatively soon. Um, Nancy Clues, it's on her list when she's back in the office in a couple of days, and that's going to be, we're, we, have a, we have a new video that's teed up and ready to go, and I think people will be uh, pleased to see some of the things that we have uh, going in concert with some of our partners. I was really pleased to see the number of people that were walking downtown um, the other night when I was down there, and you and I discussed that. And I was, I'm just very glad to see people actually walk Arlington and taking the time to go from point A to point B, and I, I appreciate it. So if you haven't seen the signs, take a look out there. They're all over the, the village, and uh, you can burn a couple of calories while you're walking to work or walking with your friends. So thanks so much. Okay. Anything further? Trustee Theodore. I'm gonna, maybe I'll throw Charles uh, this one. Charles, you want to tell us about the pending light ceiling that's going to be at the intersections of Vale and Campbell because people are asking what is happening there. Uh, yes, so the light ceiling is under construction. The poles were shipped and started to be installed late last week. Uh, they would have been completed today, but the weather. So uh, hopefully they'll be completed tomorrow, Wednesday, and then they'll start running their strands for hanging the lights and then activating those lights and restoration of the sidewalk around where the um, poles are being installed. So hopefully by the end of this week, early next week, the light ceiling will be up and operating. A canopy of lights. A canopy of lights. For a light ceiling is. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be kind of cool. People are very excited about it. Mm -hmm. think, uh, I think it's going to be bring a whole new element to the downtown area. And they're all LED lights and on a sensor, so they'll go off at a certain time at night, so they won't be so on all tuned. night. Yeah. All right. Thank anything, you, man. Anything further? Seeing none, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. By Trustee Scaletta, second by Trustee Rosenberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all for joining us this evening.